Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another World Cup review Japan 1, Croatia 1 The first penalty shootout of the World Cup in the knockout stages And it ends quite sad for Japan as they get knocked out um, I mean they played really really well against Germany and Spain but I mean I was expecting this to be fair because I think my last review against Spain J J uh, Japan Spain I said Japan against Croatia is gonna be one of those games they just don't know and the reason that is the case is because Japan did beat two top sides in Germany and Spain but they did lose to Costa Rica so Croatia are sort of their meat table bro Right, it's only the mid table area, and I think they will draw against that team and potentially go to penalties. I did have that feeling. It did happen. Um, two sides quite even. Um, Maeda getting Japan that one 0 lead. Um, just, just under half time. Um, but Perisic with a thumping header, um, made it one one and equalized. And after that, it was just, let's go into extra time and penalties, it seemed. Um, but, you know, Japan, I thought they did alright, you know, for majority of the game. But the penalties were awful. I mean, Minamino and Yoshida's were quite bad. Croatia took the penalties that they had. They scored them. And that is the whole point. And Japan will be looking at that going... It's a disappointing way to get knocked out, considering how sort of good we have been against the side of Germany and Spain. But against the side of Croatia, you know, it's sort of like I feel like Japan sort of went to the game thinking we are probably going to win this. We are probably going to get a comfortable win. You know, we've been in Germany, we've been in Spain. Why can't we do it again? Sort of mentality, right? And as good as a mentality that is, it's good mentality, of course. But it's a bit, it's a bit too arrogant and egoistic you know it's not that bad but I feel that I felt that that maybe if they lost or they drew to the other two sides and maybe still got through let's say they beat Costa Rica and, and had a tough game against Germany and or Spain right maybe sort of their arrogance and the ego will be down because you know they aren't so high you know basically after that Germany and Spain game they feel they can do it and as much as they feel that way Croatia coming to this game sort of an, as underdogs which clicked to their hands because when Japan won their up when won their up it was like okay now let's hope for the best and Croatia knocked on the door got the equalizer and it went to penalties Japan very very bad you know the penalties Croatia scored their penalties and won 3 1 on penalties. Nothing else to be said. Croatia deserved it. I would have loved a Japan Brazil quarterfinals. I would have loved Japan to go through because they sort of have a soft spot in my heart in terms of their football and how they played against Germany and Spain and you know, this sort of football that they've been playing. For sure, they have sort of a soft spot. But it's come to an end. And Croatia, Luka Modric, I'll be rooting for him, but I don't know who to root for. I mean, if you are a Real Madrid fan, or even if you are not a Real Madrid fan, you're just a Manchester United fan, or a Chelsea fan, or a Bayern fan, or, or whatever team you support. If you have got two countries now with some of your favorite players playing for both, it's sort of like, who do I support, right? And I'm, I'm a neutral, luckily, for this World Cup. Brazil, Croatia is going to be an interesting watch. You've got Vini, Rodrigo, Militao against Modric. Who is going to fare out in that one? It'll be very interesting. It'll be very, very interesting. Um, I mean, he's what, 37, 38, and he's still doing really well. I mean, he had a great strike. Great strike. I think he was tipped over the bar by Gonda. But, yeah, he's going to be a crucial player for this Croatian side. And Croatia just knows how to get it done. You know, th look at the team. They have experience. Perisic has experience. Modric has experience. Kovacic, you know, might not have as much experience as the other two, but he has some experience. And obviously, won the Champions League with Chelsea. He's done it before in the big stages. 
So you look at the team, they have really, really experienced players, but they have got the younger players coming through as well. Gvardiol, really, really, really talented centre back. I think he'll move to one of the top, top sides. No disrespect to, no disrespect to Leipzig, but I don't think they are at that level. Like a Real Madrid, I'm not trying to be, you know, arrogant as my club, but or uh, Chelsea or uh, Liverpool, I doubt so. But or uh, maybe even in Manchester United, you know, one of these sides who I think will be a step up. Gvardiol, incredible. I think Sosa, left wing back, left back, again not speaked of enough. He's a solid left back, solid sort of player. Um, obviously Brozovic always in there. That number six role is for him. He's just really really good one of the best CDMs I think he's quite underrated to be fair I think Marcelo Brozovic has been doing it with Inter for a couple of seasons now and yeah I think he's a quality player um, and yeah the rest of the players are how it is but you know this side really know how to get it done and they'll take on Brazil next it'll be a very very interesting game but they'll be for today's review between Japan and Croatia Hope you guys have enjoyed today's review. Hit the like button, guys. Did subscribe to the channel that's on already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.